Welcome to Atlanta Live. I am your host, Pastor Yavis T. McKenzie, Pastor of Disciples of Christ Christian Ministries. Welcome to the program tonight. Look, we're going to have a wonderful time. As I often do, get a pen, a pencil, something to write on. You will definitely want to have our guest. COVID is not going to last always, so you'll need this singer tonight. You'll need him in your concert, in your event hall. The preachers that we have on tonight, you'll either want to come to their church or have them come to yours. And definitely our motivational speaker that we have tonight. All of us in this body of Christ right now need some motivation. Amen. And so therefore, tonight's guests, we're going to have a myriad of people that will be able to bless you tonight. Don't forget, if you're in need of a blessing, dial that number 770-300-9828. We have prayer warriors ready to pray for you. We are definitely excited about what God is doing. Now, let's go to our music set, Robbie Rivers with Elohim, Strong and Mighty. <laughs>
That is Robbie Rivers, Elohim, strong and mighty. You serve, I serve, we serve a strong and mighty God. Amen. Let's welcome our first guest tonight. Amen. We're blessed to have Bishop Darius and Pastor Jackie Key. Bless the Lord for you all being here tonight. I'm excited to have you all here. Pastors, lead pastors of Cathedral of Grace uh, Ministry Church here in Decatur, Georgia of Atlanta. Tell us about what God is doing in the life of Cathedral of Grace. Well, God is doing great things in the life of Cathedral of Grace. You know, we, we formed uh, back in 2016, um, and we started out in Grayson, Georgia. We started doing a Saturday service, ah. um, and then in the process of doing the Saturday services, God called us to do a Sunday night service in Decatur, right. you know, and we started doing both services simultaneously, and God just began to miraculously bless us in our Sunday services in Decatur, so we ultimately moved to Decatur cater where the Lord has really just shown up in so many ways uh, on Sundays and Wednesdays when we're there. God really just, he just blesses us and he blows our mind time after time. I mean, it's just awesome to see uh, uh, what God is doing in this season and in this hour, even during pandemic, how God is yet blessing. Amen. Amen. And I, I just love it. When I see uh, uh, our modern day power couples of ministry, I love how you all work together. I love how that you all are in sync. Pastor Jackie, how is it that being able to support your husband, but you, God has already given you that ability to where he, a bishop, allows you to have your freedom? Well, you know, um, Bishop and our family, our children are are our first ministry. Okay. And so uh, that just kind of comes naturally, but I get a joy in being able to work along, have the privilege of working along with my husband in ministry. It's just wonderful to be able to serve the people of God and to uh, help to answer the call there's so many needs. Right. And as Bishop said, we're in the Decatur area, so we're in an area where we can uh, help with the homeless, uh, help with those uh, to provide food where there's a food shortage or yes. insecurity, and so many other ways. And so I just thank God that we're able to do this and walk it out. We always kind of joke, but it's become our mantra for the church. We walk it out in grace together. Amen. And that's really what our congregation is how it is built and structured. We're just people walking it out Amen. in grace. Amen. I love it. Uh, uh, when, when, when you first walk in, you just go, oh, okay, it's just a regular storefront church and doing that. But once you get in, and it has been said, I was there, it has been said, you all have a small, somewhat storefront church with cathedral, <laughs> really, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 amenities. I mean, there are things that are there that I find in the church that the average uh, storefront church, if you call that, don't have. I mean, I walk in, you have screens, you have monitors, you have cameras, you have everything. Bishop, how does that aid you in sharing the gospel that God has called you to be? Because you're a preacher now. And so <laughs> God is giving you that ability. How much does it mean to have all of that support there? Because you got the physical support, but being able to have all of those amenities. Well, for me, I've always been technology based. Okay. Um, I've always felt a nudge or a push to focus ministry around technology, even pre-pandemic. Okay. Prior to pandemic, we were already having virtual services. You know, in our wow. transition from Grayson to Decatur, we took the last two months of the year and did straight virtual services. And that was two years ago. <laughs> so our congregation had already uh, been used to okay. and been uh, made aware of how to stream the service or how to watch the service via the internet and things of that, via YouTube and things of that nature. So it, it, it comes natural. I believe that we should always 
plan and prepare to be a blessing to God's children in any way, shape, or form or fashion that we can. If that means in, in person, yeah, we will meet you in person. If yes. that means virtually, we will meet you virtually. We have to be able to grow whichever way the church grows. Uh, and, and it's been my vision to make sure that whichever way the church grows, I, I believe they say, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. So yes. I make sure that I stay tuned okay. to the voice of God and, and I hear what God is saying, and I follow the leading of God's voice. Amen. And Pastor Jackie, now, uh, we know you for being able to sing with your sister growing up in this <laughs> air, traveling the country, singing around with the Jerkin twins, being able to have that, and now being able to transition from, okay, everybody knowing me as the singing twin, one of the singing twins, to now being able to come and know that I am a woman of God, wow. sharing God's word, leading God's people. Yeah. How is it of a transition for you, and how is it of a transition for those who sometimes want to keep you as the singer? Well, I tell you what. In everything, I think God uses uh, every moment, every season of our lives to get us ready for the next, whatever that is. And so God doesn't waste any opportunities. He doesn't waste any experiences. So I just really look at it that it was the, another transition. I evolved into where God had already willed uh -huh. for me to be. Yes. I, I came into a place where he already saw from the beginning yes. how this thing was going to look towards this phase and yes. this season of my life. And so I thank God for my pastor who happens to be my bishop and my husband. Yes. But I thank God for him because he began to see the gift in me wow. to minister and to do other things in ministry and he said okay I think it's time for you to go to your next place or to your next stretch wow. in God and so I think everything that has happened in my life it has prepared me for this moment now it's Amen. just been grace upon grace upon grace Hence, that is Cathedral of Grace. Cathedral of Grace. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop, what, what is God saying? Uh, a, a lot of people are listening to God's voice, looking for God's voice during the pandemic. You know, we're, we're trying to find God in the rock. If he speaks through the water, if he speaks in the sky, we're looking for God right now during the pandemic. What do you feel that God is saying to his people during this time? Well, it's funny that you ask because this year, we started this year, the first four weeks of the year, we, I started a series called Believe. Mm. Uh, and, and in that series, I've been teaching that whatever is happening in this moment, whatever is happening in this season, whatever is happening in this hour, just believe God. Yes. Because God would never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. God knew before he formed you in your mother's womb. He yes. knew that this pandemic was going to happen. Yes. I believe God purposed us and, and he formed us and he prepared us uh, for this season and for this hour. So I tell the congregation and the church all the time. This is the year to believe God. I know what may have happened in 2021 or 2020, but I believe that yes. in 2022, this is the year to believe. I believe the Bible says that all things are possible yes, to yes, them yes, that believe. If yes. you can just believe God yes. in this moment, in this season, and in this hour, God's going to do something miraculous. I, I choose to believe that, and I, I stand on that, because now we're going to have to make full proof of that ministry. Yes. And ministry not does not have to mean a title. Yes. It does not have to mean a church or an institution. If you said that you are a believer in God, I believe in 2022, we're going to have to make full proof of that being able to not deny him, Peter, and not yeah. deny him three times before he comes back, but really be able to say, I am a believer. Yes. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am, and I'm not ashamed of it. Pastor Jackie, what, I know you have a series on Saturday mornings that you wake us up with, <laughs> amen, and be able to have. What did God say to you about those early Saturday mornings that prompted you to start that, that work? Well, I think Saturdays, we look at it and we say, this is my time of rest. This is my time of maybe after a long week or a challenging week or whatnot that I can just kind of kick back. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in those moments, God wants to speak with us. Wow. And yeah. so I thought maybe this is a good time to just um, 
have a word of encouragement, a word of motivation, a word of inspiration through the word of God. So we take 30 minutes on Saturday morning and we just have a conversation literally online with people chatting back and forth with us talking about the word of God. How can I take this simple scripture? Yes. How can I take this simple text and make it real in my life for what I'm going through right now, yes. for what I'm experiencing, yes. for the hope that I need, yes. for the belief that I yes. need to have strengthened in my life? What can I do with this word yes. to make it real and come alive in me now? Yes. And so that's what Super Saturday is all about. It's a, it's a, a, a time to get re refreshed and to get repowered in the word of God. Amen. And you got to get up early Amen. in the morning, eight <laughs> o'clock to get it. So we tell people, grab something good to drink, get comfortable, get comfortable so God can really let the word wow. flow through you. Wow. And, and, and Bishop, as church is evolving and mm -hmm. going forth, we're, you're going forth and doing it at Cathedral of Grace. You're having your families there. You're having people there. You're ministering. What I love about it is you exist in a neighborhood that you don't leave the neighborhood out. Yes. Yes. There are a lot of churches I know that cannot and do not minister in the houses that are around their church. Yes. Amen. And so therefore you all take, and you being there on that corner right there where Wesley Chapel and Snap what is Finger. it, Snap Finger mm -hmm. meets right there. There are a lot of homeless that are there. And I love it. You all have a pantry. Yes. I've been to the church. There's a pantry. Absolutely. And I was looking, I said, okay, do they have a grocery store? <laughs> no, it's to meet the needs of the people. Absolutely. It's to meet the needs of the people. What is God saying for us? Because we here in Atlanta, and I'm sure in places across the country, uh, during this time of cold, that they, they, they are in need. Mm -hmm. They are in need. How can we, as a people, be of more service to our uh, brothers and sisters that are less fortunate than us? Because the Bible does declare, and and we know this for a fact. The question is asked: When did you see me naked? When did you see me in need? And so we have to then lay that charge of how we can help those people. What is God saying to us, or how should we deal with it? Because uh, some first person to say, "I don't have a million dollars." It don't take a million dollars. Absolutely. How do we deal with that, Bishop? So it. It's interesting because when I started the ministry in a dream, God told me everybody needs grace. That's wow. how this all kind of came to fruition. Wow. His first words to me was, everybody needs grace. Wow. So even when we look at our community and the surrounding areas, what most people don't know is we show up to church on Sunday mornings and the, the homeless are sleeping literally at right door. at our front door, yes. you know, and we have to uh, uh, talk with them or help them and, and do all of those things. Uh, but I believe that it's important that we realize that we have not always been where we are. Oof. And, yes, and you know, they say uh, it could be you one day yes. and, and, or you could be up one day and down the next. Yes. You know, we have to make sure that we take care of those that are less fortunate than ourselves. Yes. Because even in pandemic, God has blessed us tremendously. Wow. Yes. If you woke up this morning, Talk, sir. if Talk. God yes. started you on your way, yes, sir. if you're still in your right still mind, still in your right mind, then God has blessed you. Yes. You know, and so for those that are homeless or, or, or in, in lack of, you know, it is our duty for those of us that God has blessed, maybe not with much, but whatever he has blessed us with, yes. it is our duty to sow back into those that are less fortunate. That's why scripture teaches us, give and it shall be given. Yes. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, you know. Amen. Amen. And, and, and that's the good, exciting part. Pastor Jack, in about a minute, tell us, there, there are a lot of people feeling uneasy. There are a lot of people wanting to throw in the towel. There are a lot of people wanting to just give up, get out, give out, and give in. In about one minute, what can you say to encourage those people that are watching now to say, I'm holding on to the last part of this rope? And I want to say to them, our, our theme this year is you have to believe. Yes. You have to believe that God is able. You have to believe that he has more than enough. Yes. You have to believe that... This isn't your last. You have to believe yes. that this is just the beginning yes. and God is just getting started. You have to believe that how this is going to end is going to be so much better than how it started. You have to believe. Yes. 
and, and if you need to increase your faith, because I know people are getting tired and people are hurting and people, you know, faith and their confidence is, is waning to some degree. But I need those who are strong in the faith yes. to, to encourage yes. one another yes. with the word of God that, as Bishop said, he'll never leave us. Never. He'll walk with us. Yes. He'll talk with us. He'll give us strategy. Yes. He'll give us answers if we just believe. Yes, and so believe. I would encourage everyone tonight to know that the God that we serve, yes. the God that we love, yes. if he did it for us, yes. he'll do it for you. <laughs> wow. If he did it for you, Pastor yes. Yavis, yes. he will do it for someone else. And it is no secret yes, what God can yes. do, what he's done for others. He'll do the very exact same thing for you as well. Amen. I need somebody, to, one of you all, to tell us how can they find Cathedral of Grace? How can they find it uh, streetwise, social media-wise? Tell us because I'm excited and I want them to continue the excitement to say, hey, I'm ready to get back to church. I need somewhere to go visit. I need somebody to tune in to. How can they get in touch with well, you? Well, the all? physical street address is 2728 Wesley Chapel Road in Decatur, Georgia, where we say Decatur is greater. Yes, <laughs> But you can also find us on our website at livingwithgrace.org. And then on social media, all things Cathedral of Grace. Amen. Amen. Give it to us one more time, Pastor Jackie or Bishop. Just give it because we want people to be able to say, I need a reference. I need an area so that we'll be able to go. Give it to us one more time, Bishop. Okay. It's 2728 Wesley Chapel Road in Decatur, Georgia, right at the intersection of Snap Finger and Wesley Chapel. And for those that need a landmark, we are right next door to Golden Glide Skating Rink. <laughs> if you know Golden Glide, yes. if you can get the Golden Glide, you can get the Grace. Amen. And then you can find us uh, uh, on our website at livingwithgrace.org. That's livingwithgrace.org. And then on social media, Cathedral of Grace Church. Amen. Bless you. Bishop Darius so Key, much. Pastor Jackie Key, bless the Lord for you all being with us tonight. Thank you all so much. That's Cathedral of Grace. If you are in the Atlanta area, just take I-20 from downtown, come 20, um, getting off at the exit of Wesley Chapel, make a right, and if you'll look on your GPS there, right over there to the left, again, you'll be able to see it there and know for a fact. God is blessing us in this day and time. Now let's go to our music set, Robbie Rivers. If not for your grace. Where would I be if not for your grace carrying me through every season? Where would if not for your grace, you came to my rescue, and I want to thank you for your grace. Grace like a river. For your grace, carrying me in every season. Where would I be if not for your grace? Lord, you came to my rescue. Grace that repairs, visions and dreams. 
is Robbie Rivers, if not for your grace. Do you not understand that we are here by the grace of God, the unmerited favor of God? We don't deserve it, you all. We don't deserve it by where we've done, what we've been, who we are. We don't rightly deserve it. But because of the unmerited favor and grace of God, he still allows us to continue in what we do. And yet there is a Savior that allows us to have that freedom that we have connectedness to him. You all, I am definitely excited about the grace of God. I don't know how long his grace is and how long he extends it. So therefore, I'm going to thank God for the grace that I already have. Y'all, can y'all tell us a grace kind of night? Amen. It's a grace kind of night. And I'll just encourage you right now. If you're thinking that it's all up for you, your life is over, your life is done, that you're giving up and you're about to throw in the towel, I want to tell you one further. Grace said, no, hold on just a little while longer, that there is yet work for you to do. God's grace is covering your life. God's grace, I don't care where you've been and what you're doing, I don't care what you're doing right now. God's grace covers you enough that you have one more opportunity to accept him. You say, Pastor McKenzie, I'm ready to do it. Before you go, dial that number, 770-300-9828. We have prayer warriors to pray with you and talk you to and through this thing we call grace. Amen. I am excited. Woo, Robbie Rivers, that is a blessing, if not for your grace. Amen. Amen. Let's bless the Lord for our next guest, Ty Norris. Bless the Lord for you, brethren, being here with us on tonight. 
Ty, we know you to be a motivational speaker, a life coach, and God has opened up many doors for you. Um, wh what does God say a after, look, after a song Listen. like that, talking <laughs> about the grace of yeah, God, yeah. you have a rich story that sometimes people don't know your background. That's right. As they see, they see the polished part, but they don't know your journey and your story. Tell us about Ty Norris. Pastor Javis, first of all, yes, Robbie Rivers, grace is letting you know that there are better days ahead. Yes, sir. And my story goes a little bit, um, my book I wrote called The Business of Overcoming was birthed out of a divorce. Wow. A divorce and losing my father and my job all within a matter of time. 45 minutes before my wedding, my father succumbed to a aneurysm. Wow. And died, uh, well, went into a coma and then died about three months later. And so our marriage started out very, very rough. Okay. And it ended five years later. And he died, my divorce, and losing my job. And I'm a believer. I believe God is able, and I can quote the Bible, yes, but sir. I found myself in a precarious situation okay. where I needed the grace of God to reassure me of his hope and that better days really are ahead. Yes, sir. And so the book was birthed out of a journal. I, I was in my hotel room. I had moved out, and I didn't know what my next step was because you never can prepare for divorce. Yes, sir. And I grew up. I'm third generation Kojic. I'm an ordained elder of the Church of God in Christ. I had thought I did everything right and followed the protocol. Yes, sir. to achieve uh, the, be the, the, the best life, and I found myself divorced. But God spoke to me and told me, he said, you're an overcomer. Wow. And the scripture said they overcame him by their testimony Eesh, and sir. the blood of the Lamb. And my testimony is God is a healer, God is a deliverer. And so I found myself um, in this bad situation. Okay. I birthed the book. I wrote it as a journal to men okay. to encourage men because a lot of times you can't find outlets for men and there, it's hard to get them to open up. My bachelor's is in uh, English language and literature. Okay. So I'm a storyteller. I, 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 I craft stories. And so the book was birthed out of that and it just became a blessing okay. uh, to so many. Amen. And, 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 and a lot of people don't... <sighs> You know, a lot of people don't like sharing where they've been. And if nothing else, and I'm not encouraging divorce right. for anybody. Right. But I hear a word in that that's saying there's life after divorce. There's life, definitely. There's not. life after divorce. We think that there's no, uh, and I say that not just in respect mm -hmm. of husband and wife, but there's life after divorce of a job. Right. There's life after divorce of moving from one house to another. Right. There's life after the divorce of a car. You've had this car. Betsy been keeping you going for a long time. And now you don't have Betsy anymore. We have the, the divorce is that separation. Yeah, yeah. And so what we have to know and what you just encouraged me, and I saw that just that quick, yeah. Yavis, there's a blessing after the separation. Yes. There's a blessing after that. And so you pinned it as a journal so that men could journal. What Was it a journal so that they could journal the experience or journal about what God is talking about? It was a journal to give men hope and encouragement uh, a lot of times women have women groups because women love to talk and men use very few words. Yes, sir. But the book was written, it was book so that it could just store it in their gym bag. Okay. Um, it, it's not a long read, just a few, it, it's five points on how you can overcome anything in life. And I uh -huh. decree and declare, Man, woman, boy, girl, whatever you're going through, you are an overcomer. Yes. You can overcome. So I list five tools in the book that you can overcome any area in your life. Amen. I, I choose to be an overcomer. There are so many obstacles we have, but Ty, there are a lot of people get stuck mm -hmm. and, and they can't achieve that point of overcoming. There are a lot of people. How do we get to the point where we no longer allow those things to hold those things to hold us back? Because in order to be an overcomer, we have to go forward. Right. And a lot of us are stuck. And I speak generally. Right. There are a lot of us that are stuck to say, okay, okay, this is where I am. This is my lot. This is what God has given me. So I'll just deal with this. How do we move from that area of defeat to becoming an overcomer? So there's a popular story in literature called The Scarlet Letter. Yes, sir. Book. And it's a, it's a, it chronicles the story of a woman who, um, through an adulterous affair, became pregnant and birthed the baby. Mm -hmm. And she, it, the story is set in a very religious town full of uh, societal norms okay. and how people should govern their life. But this woman, when, they, when the society finds out that she's pregnant through an affair, they march her into the center of the town and they, they 
post her on the stage and they ridicule and shame her, demanding to know who the father is. Wow. And she won't disclose who the father is because if she does, it will bring him down because he's the local pastor. Wow. But the story really chronicles how she navigates through that story, births this baby, and raises this child. How many of people sitting out there now have stories that they cannot share of abuse, of a trauma, of shame, of guilt, of things that they've carried that they cannot talk about? I'm going to wow. get to why, how you navigate through that. You have to create your own narrative. And my yes. book talks about that. Yes. Creating a narrative that, you, that, that informs and inspires your own life. This yes. woman raises her daughter in this small <laughs> cottage. My, my, yes. The story says that she even gave um, uh, to the needy and the poor. Mm -hmm. And she, she, she made a living meagerly by being a seamstress needlepoint. Okay. She did, so you do, you do what you had to do, like the little boy with the sack lunch that fed the 5,000 mm -hmm. fish. You use what's in your bag. That's it. You use what God has given you. Yes. And you parlay that into what, what works for you. Yes. Yes, I, I, there are a lot of people wanting to do so many things. I love the fact, again, uh, uh, Moses, what you have in your hand? Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. Just, just use what you have. But a lot of people, may, and maybe that's just it, Ty. A lot of us don't spend time finding out what our gifts are. We too busy looking at somebody else's mm -hmm. gift, wishing that and woulda, coulda, shoulda, wishing mm -hmm. that that was our gift without finding out where we are and being able to do. I, I'm like one other person that I heard on television recently that, uh, you know, they spend all this time. I just wish you shut up. I just wish you shut up. And people have spent a lot of time telling this person to shut up. Now they're on television talking for a living. <laughs> oh, okay. And we, we don't understand where our giftings are and we yeah. have to find ourselves and do that. I love what you said, create your narrative. Yes, sir. Create your narrative because I, I find this. I can explain explain my life better than you ever can. Exactly. So let me create the narrative of who I am, where I've come from, and where I'm going. How do we get people to get in that mindset to create the narrative? Because I, I look at this, and I don't know if it's in your book, we are operating out of the narrative that others have created for right. us. Right, right. Our families have said you're going to be this way. The preacher has said, ha ta ba ba uh -huh. that God has said this is who you're going to be. So we're trying to operate under the narrative even of what our job says. How do we operate in the narrative that God has called us? Because we, we got all these masks right. we're trying to operate under. How do we operate in the narrative that God has given us? So the second half of that story about that woman, they made her wear a emblem with an A on it that stood for adultery. Wow. And so my ministry, my brand, what I do in the marketplace is called to people that have been forced to wear narratives and brands wow. that talk about their trauma and the things they've been through. Wow. And so one of the first things you do is to get away by yourself. Wow. The story talks about her getting a cottage in the country. When I went through my different things, I pulled away. I had a small group around me, mm -hmm. like my mother, my siblings, and, and uh, my fraternity brothers, and they just, just so they knew I was okay. okay. But I got away, I got in God's presence. I yes. don't know how I did it. And wow. let me say this, I didn't lose my mind, but even if I had lost my mind, uh -huh. God is even in what they say, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes, sir. He said, yes, wherever sir. you make your bed, I'll be. If it's in the fire, I'll be, like the three he Hebrew boys. Yes, so sir. one of the first thing is to pull away. Okay. It's okay, but let people know that you're okay. Okay. And get clear about who you are. I had to understand that I'm not divorced. My name is Ty. Wow. I'm a man. Wow. And then I'm a man of God. Wow. Period. I'm not a statistic. Okay. And I'm not society's norm. I'm who God says. And the Bible says I was shaped and formed in his image. And you know what? Yes. Pastor Yavis, that's <laughs> enough for me. Yes. Maybe not for the next person. Yes. He should yes. be this. He should be that. I'm a third generation coach. I should be doing this. No, I'm good. 
Yes. Me and God got this together. Yes, yes. I, I, I love it because then it allows, like you said, to create the narrative. I'm excited about who I am. I, I, I find this, I'm 54, going to be 55 this year. Mm -hmm. I am just now at 54 yes. finding out who I am. <laughs> it's the craziest yeah. thing in yeah. the world. And so people, I've heard them say, you know, once you get past 50, you know, you'll be able to find, and I'm at the age now yeah. where I go, no, I'm not going there. Exactly. No, I'm not exactly. doing that. Oh, you upset? Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm not, because now I'm finding out who I am. And I know people say, oh, you should have found that out years ago. Walk your journey. See? Walk your right shoes. There, leave mine alone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> leave exactly. mine alone. And so I'm in that place now to where I'm now creating the, like you said, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be using it a Take lot. Thank you, brother. I'm creating the narrative around me yes. that I want to see for my life. Yes. I'm not getting any younger. Right. So I need to create the narrative around me. You got negative, I'm sorry, my narrative has peace. Yes. If you got a yes. narrative of negative, you're in the wrong space. We, we ne negative don't live here. Yes. Yes. We don't come through the threshold. And so so how do we motivate others? Because then we get excited about where we are, and then we go, okay, you want to stay where you are. How do we motivate those others around us? Because I don't want to leave my brothers and sisters out now. I'm not going to let them leech on me right. and pull me back. So how do I now motivate them that this is where I am? Because I'm finding this out, Ty, and you can help your brother on here right quick. Okay. How do we get others or get ourselves? Because now they don't like the new you. Sure. They don't like this, uh, um, this new, oh, you think you knew. Oh, you, no, I just found out that I'm no longer where you are. Right. So how do we now move beyond in our own mind that I'm not hurting them, I don't mean any harm to anybody, I'm not trying to be new or better than anybody, but I'm in a new place. How do we, I guess, resolve ourselves to be in this new place? First of all, it's not easy. Okay. But it has to get done. It has if to you done. want to see better days, yes, sir. if you want to operate under God's grace and his mercy, it's not automatic. Wow. It takes effort. And so you have to be willing to put in the work and to do what's required. It's work to be broke yes. and it's work to not be broke. Yes. They both require <laughs> energy. Yes, sir. You say, no, it doesn't. Yes, it yes, does. Sir. Yes, it does. So you have to be willing to put in the work. If you want to see a life that you overcome, you have to be willing to put in the work. And the second main thing is you have to change your mindset. Think about the psychosis, uh -huh. how you think about yourself. Yes. And my friend always tells me when you're addressing something in your life, whether it's conflict, whether it's good, you have to look at it through a different lens. Okay. And it says if the lens is blurry, you got to clean it. Yes, sir. Or get a new pair of lenses. Yes, sir. I love it. I love <laughs> it. How, how do we, we have just a few moments, how um, um, in this being able to shape this, being able to do this, this is not something new to you. Right. Uh, uh, um, this is who you are. You uh, are the only um, Christian show yes. on a secular station. Yes. Okay, we got yes. about a minute, just okay. a minute to talk about that. How, how is that? And uh, because just like you're talking to me now, I feel yeah. like I'm in a session, actually. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a life coach session right, yes, session right now. <laughs> how do we, um, uh, you do that on a consistent basis, the uh, sure. first and third uh, Tuesday yes. of every month. You have your radio broadcast there. Tell us a little bit about that. Everything you do, we have to start understanding is interrelated. It's okay. correlated. Okay. You're mind, body, soul. Yes, sir. When you walk, your mind's not over there. You don't leave it over there. So when I birthed the book, I was a guest on a radio show and I talked to the show owner afterwards and it, he said, you know what? You have a good product. Um, have you considered having, to, we have talk radio. I said, well, I talk about God, we pray. He was like, I want you to be you. And it was a, we formed a partnership and I created my own show called Tuesdays with Ty. And the theme is narratives that inform and inspire. But it's similar to the book of Esther where God is not always mentioned, but he's there. Ooh. But when he is mentioned, his, the, the, his word goes out. Yes. And so that's the book, it, from the book, the show parlay. That's why I tell people, get out of your way and, and just use what's in your hand. You don't know sometimes what's on the other side. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. That, 
and again, we can find you. You're, you're there um, on the radio. Yeah. Um, yes. You said what? Every first and third. Every first and third Tuesday. You can uh, on my any one of my social media platforms. When the show airs, you can find it there, and you can go to my website www.tynorth.net and you can also get information about the show there. Okay, and spell it because you know, I know it's down in the lower thirds yep. here on the screen now, but tell us exactly how they can see Ty Norris and just be able to yes. get you, how they can follow you and be able to do it. I would love for y'all to follow me and be a part of narratives that inform and inspire. Ty Norris is T-Y-N-O-R-R-I-S dot net or on one of my social media handles, Ty Norris. Amen. Bless you, Ty. Thank you for being thank a part you. of our program here tonight and being able to encourage us. We thank God for you, you and your ministry. You all understand this. Yavis just got, look, I just got coached tonight, amen, being able to do. That's what I believe Atlanta Live is all about. We have guests. We thinking that we're hosts and that we're blessing them, but honestly, our guests bless us, and I am blessed tonight to have had some wonderful guests. But did you all catch the theme tonight, you all? I believe that the theme tonight is grace, and I want to encourage you tonight that whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, know that the grace of God is over your life, in your life, and operating through your life. You don't have to give up. You don't have to give out. You don't have to give in. Grace, and the word of God has declared his grace is sufficient for you. Robert Rivers is coming now with Bear Fruit. Go! 
Jesus lives and that he can save from the gutter to the uttermost. He's able. Yeah. You've got the strength of God. You've got the grace of God. You've got goodness and mercy. It will follow you. Amen, amen. Can I tell you, I, I, I'm listening to that right there. I feel right churchy right there. Bear fruit. Let me just encourage you right now. If God has called you, go bear fruit. I'm begging you, my sister and my brother. You're waiting for a title. You're waiting for someone to my give Lord. you a piece of paper. You're waiting for someone to sprinkle oil and anointing on you. Guess what? God has already called you. He wants you to go and bear fruit. Don't let him be like when he came back for the fig tree. My and there was nothing Come on, on it. Amen. We want you to bear fruit. Do what God has called you to do and watch and see there will be people that have been waiting right, for right. your vine. Amen. Yes. Robbie Rivers, bless the Lord for bless you, you sir, you. being able to do. Robbie, you're back in Atlanta. God has mm -hmm. called you back here to uh -huh. minister. Singing songs like that, sir, you're going to hurt somebody in church. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now, just to let you loose. What is God saying to you in this hour and this time and bringing you back home? That is, I guess in this, for, first of all, thanks for having me. Bless you, sir. Here on the program. I enjoyed the guest that was before me. Um, I believe that wherever we are, it's important that we don't forget the um, commission. Yes. Don't forget what you were redeemed for. Yeah. Oof. Don't forget what you were um, given grace for. Yes. Because um, it is to, it's to bear fruit. Yes. That's the only reason why, that is the only reason why we exist. Yes. And whatever our passion is, be it, be it uh, preaching the word of God or singing the word of God, yes. we ought to make sure that we embrace that because it is his purpose for our existence. Amen. I remember when God gave me the name of my ministry, Disciples mm -hmm. of Christ Christian Ministries. He said, go make disciples to make disciples to, to make, make disciples. disciples. Right. I said, what in the world? Bear fruit, son. Bear fruit. Bear fruit. Amen. And so in doing that, God has called you to travel all over this country. Yes. You are one singing brother. I just love your Thank spirit. You. I love your voice. Where you. are you now and what is God calling you to? Ah, uh, well, I'm still seeking God right now. Amen. Uh, for the next um, route to take. Okay. Um, however, in this uh, COVID season that we're in, I always say that during this time, God has allowed us to experience. We still have to still be working in the in the factory. Amen. Yes, sir. And, um, <laughs> constantly seeking God for more inspiration and for more uh, messages and what He wants to uh, uh, spread through. Uh, our gifts that he's given us and to the uh, to the to the public Amen. As I encourage everybody, COVID is not going to last it's always. Not, I believe not. that it's on its way out. If we touch and agree, exactly. I just believe that in it's Jesus on its name. way out. Amen. In right. Jesus' name. How can people get in touch with you? They'll say, you know what? I love his voice. I love him. I'm glad that he's back. How can people get in touch with you to have you on their conference? Because I speak singers right now yes. in conferences. In I speak, name, right, speak right. singers in conventions. Exactly. No longer will they be in front of their television. Right. But I just believe that God is going to release singers mm -hmm. and all of those that have been behind, that have, you know, put in time exactly. with their CD, that he's going to release and that you all will be able to travel. But they got to find out how to get in touch with exactly. you to be able to do that. How can they get in touch with Robbie Rivers? They can get in touch with me through my website. It is Rivers of Melody Music dot com. That's Rivers of Melody Music dot com. Amen. And um, you can email me from that particular website. 
Amen. And, and you, look, as the old folks say, you are open for engagement. Yes, Amen. I am. Very <laughs> Amen. much open. Amen. Yes. Being able to do last one minute. What is God saying to you as far as this pandemic and for you personally in your ministry for music? Um, to be authentic with what he's given us. You don't have to be a copycat. Amen. But be you. Amen. Uh, there's every, like everybody has a fingerprint. Yes. <laughs> no one, no two fingerprints are alike. That's right. So God designed us in such a way to where there is a, a group of people that needs to hear. Yes. Um, that we can reach um, that others aren't able to reach. Yes. Yes. And um, it's the, ma the main thing is keeping our, our authenticity and being anointed with what we have. Amen. Because Ooh. that's the call. That's, That's the call. It. Amen. Because it it's the anointing that destroys yokes. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Amen. Well, thank you, Robbie Rivers, for thank being you. our musical guest tonight. You have blessed our hearts. And then just to find out where you are, thank you so much for being a part of this great program. You all, God is blessing us here at Atlanta Live tonight. Prayerfully, you've enjoyed this program tonight, that God has ministered to you in a way that you have said, you know what, I'm glad I stayed tuned. And if you're still in need of prayer, someone to touch and agree with you, dial that number 770-300-9828. We do have prayer warriors ready to pray for you. And I just want to encourage you now. I want to encourage you now, as you've heard this theme tonight of God's grace. Yes. Again, I can't say it enough. There are people going through, you're watching this program tonight and you're feeling that you are by yourself, that you are all alone. We want to encourage you tonight. All of our guests that have been on the program tonight, you are not alone. We are your brother's keeper. We are our sister's keeper. We're here to pray for you. We're believing that the best is yet to come for your life. So we're encouraging you. Get in a Bible believing church. Align yourself. We have a lot of churches that are on the internet and so therefore there are a lot of churches but gravitate to someone. I love what one of our guests said uh, Ty Norris said. He had a circle of people. Find you a circle right, of friends. Right, it don't right. have to be 30, 40, 50 people. Yeah. Find you that's a it. good group of people that you can come fight in that's not going to tell your business exactly. that you can have confidence in to say you know what this is who I am this is where I am and this is what I'm dealing and what what are you saying Mackenzie I choose to believe that his grace yeah. is sufficient oh, enough that he'll send you exactly who you need to be around you to encourage you to let you know that greater is he mm -hmm. that is on the inside of you Thank than you. he that is in the world you have a reason to hope my brother. Mm -hmm. You have a reason to hope, my sister. I am believing the God in you won't allow you to go back. The God in you won't allow you to give out. The God in you mm -hmm. says that you have more work to do. Yes. I encourage you, keep believing in what God has said. His word mm -hmm. has declared this. Let every man be a liar, mm -hmm. but let God be true. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Amen.